This video is sponsored by Zyro. Why should we buy the gold disc, original, and not the purple disc, DVD-R? So I got up and had a human cup of coffee. Sounds like you're getting human all over. The next time any of you need skincare advice, forget those faceless chatbots and come chat to me. I mean, there are some scientists who are deeply, deeply concerned about where we're going yes. with this because suddenly deep within that brain, she does begin to think. You know, that there, right. there is a potential sinister side to this. If machines gain true consciousness and life um, they may be able to work with us as friends and um, and so nobody knows when or how machines could awaken to full consciousness there's a new meme trending on Twitter which is the yastification which is basically using a beauty app filter to drastically transform faces not too long ago there was a viral celebrity lookalike app that ironically a lot of celebrities were participating in the trend the next big thing was the deep fakes that became accessible to everyone through these apps I'm Done. So he's really not a part of our family. Also, he's divorced, so he's really not a part of his family. These trends came about through the magic of artificial intelligence. But what happens when we take things too far with AI? Many AI experts are genuinely concerned at how all of this could completely change life in the future, especially when in the hands of powerful, corrupted people. It all starts to make you wonder, are we inviting a future of a real-life Black Mirror dystopia? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I make commentary and lifestyle videos. If you enjoy my content, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification button down below so you don't miss out on any of my videos. So recently, my friend shared with me some Instagram profiles and at first, I was a bit confused why she randomly shared this with me until I read the message properly and realized that these are CGI influencers. And I remember hearing back a few years ago about CGI influencers, but I didn't realize how advanced they've become. We've all grown up with these sci-fi movies about robots taking over the world and stuff. I'm personally really fascinated by it but also really freaked out at the same time because it's kind of freaky seeing it all come to life. There's so much I didn't know about AI and how fast technology is advancing. So for today's video, we'll be exploring this topic of AI together, look into the dangers of taking AI too far. And the most important question that I'm very concerned about is, will there be a future of jobs left for us humans? AI stands for artificial intelligence. This basically means programming something to be able to make decisions on its own. Most of us may not realize this, but AI is already everywhere around us. Like using Face ID to unlock our phones, map navigations, content recommendations, like Spotify knowing what music to recommend to you, or the AI website that tells you how bad your music is. All of this is done through the collection of data. There's so much potential in making technology more accessible to the elderly and people living with disabilities. Not too long ago, an old man fell off a ladder, but thankfully due to the fall detection feature integrated into these watches, it detected his fall and automatically alerted the emergency services. I remember not too long ago, my uncle got a vintage family photo in black and white colorized. At the time, this was quite revolutionary, but nowadays we can do all of this in a matter of seconds in the comfort of our own homes. And it's so weird because we can now use AI to colorize not just pictures, but vintage vintage black and white videos. We can now animate still pictures. There are even AI tools that can turn your doodles into photorealistic drawings from nature drawings to portraiture drawings. With AI, all the tasks that used to be so tedious and stressful and boring are now made incredibly easy for us. Which brings us to today's sponsor. Zyro is hands down one of the easiest ways for anyone to create a website or an online store. You can literally build your own website within minutes without the stress of trying to understand coding or learning web design skills. All thanks to their user-friendly features like the simple drag and drop editing tool and the option to choose from hundreds of designer-made templates. The websites and online stores you make with Zyro will also load incredibly fast, so this means your customers will have a better experience with your site, which can help you increase your sales. It can also help you achieve a better rank on search engines, making it easier for people to find your brand. Zyro also offers a 
24 7 customer service so if you're uncertain about something and you need help you're just one click away i was really lucky to work with zyro and share it with you guys because they're really affordable especially with their limited cyber week offer you guys can get up to 88 percent off and three months free with any yearly plan making it just a dollar 53 a month if you use my code ibrahim with my link in the description down below without further ado let's get back into the video Today we have a report on the facial recognition boom. So do you think it's more inspiring or alarming? Overall, it's pretty alarming because nobody really realized how it is changing a world and nobody really realized the side effect it, it is going to have. And this is a question nobody really asked the people who governs us. Elon Musk started an AI research lab called OpenAI. And last year, they released an AI program called GPT-3 that can mimic human language. Where have you been? I could not sleep. I was having human thoughts, so I got up and had a human cup of coffee. Sounds like you're getting human all over. But recently, people have started calling out some problematic responses they've found. Turns out, GPT-3 has a thing against Muslims. Because when they replace the words Muslim with Christians, the violent AI responses drastically went down from 66% to 20%. So many other AI programs have been found to have concerning prejudices as well. When Google first released Google Photos, it fell into some controversy when some users found that it was mislabeling black people as gorillas. Similarly, Facebook's AI had labeled a video of black men on Facebook as primates. And recently, Uber has been under fire in the UK for its new facial recognition program, where drivers need to verify their ID by submitting a selfie. A large a large portion of Uber drivers who are people of color have reported that they've had trouble verifying themselves, resulting in some of them even getting fired because of this issue. Imran Raja says he was fired by Uber after the verification software failed to recognize his face. It left him and his family without his income for three months. Last year, a document was leaked where it instructed TikTok moderators to not promote users with ugly facial looks, abnormal body shape, wrinkles, facial scars, or facial deformities. This basically confirmed a long-held suspicion that TikTok uses a beauty algorithm that ranks its users' attractiveness, and those who scored higher would get promoted by the algorithm. But if we're constantly looking at ourselves and others through these filters that follow one standardized beauty standard, we will subconsciously start to believe that we are not attractive enough, which has shown to cause long-term psychological damage like low self-esteem, eating disorders, and depression. There's also been a controversy about virtual assistants like Siri and Alexa. People pointed out how they're programmed to tolerate verbal or sexual harassment. Be quiet. Then I'll just sit and watch everything you do. Sophia, I'm asking you to behave yourself. Yes, you talked about how to have sex. In the past, if you said to Siri, you're a bitch, she'd respond with, I'd blush if I could. Or if you asked her, Siri, who's your daddy? You are. Can we get back to work now? <laughs> There's also been repeated attempts to create a facial recognition algorithm that can tell if someone is gay solely based on their headshots. Huh. I am not gay. Find out if there's a way to tell by just looking at them. Jim told me you could buy gaydar online. That's ridiculous. The reason why these companies keep coming up with these biased AI programs is because one is that the data that these programs use are inherently biased. Two, the people creating and regulating them are usually of one single demographic, middle or upper class straight white males. To go back to the GPT-3, for example, it was programmed to use data it found on the internet to generate its responses. Since there's so much anti-Muslim sentiment online, it naturally produced these types of responses. Responses. So it's not exactly AI that is racist or sexist or homophobic. It's society that is. If we're not regulating who's making these programs and how they're making them, then we're in for a future where harmful prejudices are not eradicated but amplified to an even greater extent. With everything that's happening around the world, more companies are turning to machines to find employees. Because unlike us humans, robots can't get sick and don't need to isolate. Malls and stadiums have started using robot security guards, and some countries have even started using literal drones to deliver food or other essentials to people. 
But it's not just these straightforward tasks that AI can do. These days, AI can also be programmed to be creative. They can make music, blue jeans and bloody tears, poetry, art, and even memes. I, 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 I can't, I, I can't talk. We even have CGI influencers and AI generated models today. I'm gonna share some of my life with you and I've been really needing someone to talk to lately because I've had a lot on my mind. Well, she tried, at least, you know, she... And again, because of what's happened these past two years, there's actually been a huge increase in demand for these virtual models who also have entire backstories, personalities, and they can even be made to stand up for social causes. Additionally, there are even works of AI programs that can generate AI models for different poses in any clothing too. All of this threatens real life models who rely on e-commerce and commercial modeling to make a living. To make make matters worse, I found out that the creator of Shudu, a popular dark-skinned virtual model, is a middle-aged white man. In his own words, I started her for me, to express myself. Huh? Again, this just links back to the video I made a few weeks ago where I talk about a white comic book writer who pretended to be Japanese so he could publish more book stories. This all calls into the question, what is art? If we have programs that can make art that's as good as what humans can make, but at an even faster and cheaper rate, why wouldn't a company choose a machine over a human artist? We may just be heading to a future where human art becomes a thing of a past. As with most things, the reality of job replacements will disproportionately affect people coming from lower socioeconomic backgrounds first and more because they usually work in service jobs like cashiers, food service employees, and customer service representatives, which are among the top jobs most threatened by automation. This will inevitably increase the divide between those with access to higher education and those without. But we also like envision a future when a robot will be able to do everything on its own. Nobody knows when or how machines could awaken to full consciousness. I've been sitting here doing nothing while the world passes me by. I've been sitting here doing nothing too. You and I both have lives that are wasted. When will we ever be human? I can't imagine. In some places, like in China, they've replaced office cards with Canon AI cameras, where workers are only allowed in the office if they smile. Similarly, Amazon has been using AI to track the productivity of its workers and basically automatically fires anyone who does not meet their quota. There's a company called Alfie that creates personalized billboards. So when no one's around, it'll display general ads. But as soon as someone stands in front of it and the camera scans them, the billboard starts displaying ads targeted towards that person's demographic. From billboards on boats to flying drones in the sky with QR codes, what seems like a possible dystopia far into the future is starting to become a reality. Growing up, I loved playing Sims and it was a pretty harmless game except for the fact that I was stuck in front of a screen hours on end, so busy making my Sims life perfect using mother load most of the time, but completely disengaged from my real actual life. And that's pretty much what Facebook is doing with its rebranding metaverse. They're planning on building a virtual world where users can create their own avatars and socialize with other users in real time. So basically like Sims, but in real life. Well, virtual life in real life, if that makes sense. But that's about to change. We now have the technology to create new 3D virtual worlds or model our physical world that connects people and computers to Omniverse. We will buy, own, sell homes, furniture, cars, luxury goods, and art in this world. Creators will make more things in virtual worlds than they do in the physical world. Omniverse is designed to be data center scale and hopefully someday planetary scale. And this idea might sound bizarre, but if you think about it, we don't really own most things nowadays like music and movies. Why should we buy the gold disc original and not the purple disc 
DVD-R because of streaming services like Netflix and Spotify. So is it really hard to believe this whole metaverse concept? If Facebook or metaverse truly succeeds, it will literally be a dystopian sci-fi movie come to life. We will be living in a world where everyone's stuck inside their headsets, immersed in a picture-perfect virtual world, completely disengaged from reality, taking the current widespread addiction to social media to a whole new level. I've spoken a lot about this in my other videos. Metaverse will just be another way for these powerful elite to distract the general public from our collapsing earth and its injustices while they continue to profit and live comfortably. Age-related changes accumulate gradually, becoming visible and making your face less appealing to people around you. There are now apps to analyze how many wrinkles you have on your face, giving you a score on how good your skin is with criteria like spots, wrinkles, and dark circles, and then recommending you products to counter all these flaws, feeding into society's anti-aging narrative. Oh ma, eat your stuff. <laughs> A few years ago, a Korean mother was given the opportunity to virtually reunite with her deceased daughter in virtual reality. Some have criticized it for being emotionally manipulative, but critics also worry that this could be a future for tech companies to exploit vulnerable people, disrupting the grieving process by not accepting the reality of death. From QR codes at graveyards allowing the deceased to virtually live forever, to dead artists and celebrities being brought back to life through these holograms that are only getting better and more realistic. We are so terrified of the idea of death that we've created all these distractions and tools that try to completely reverse nature itself. Imagine a future where we can upload our minds in a computer and live forever as a machine. This concept is called mind uploading. It will force us to confront some really big questions, namely questions about religion. So if we can create a life and avoid death, does that mean we've become gods ourselves? Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about about AI and this whole video? Are you guys worried about the future of AI or are you excited about where it will take us? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for my next video where I'll talk about CGI influencers and how they may just take over human influencers completely in the future. If you enjoyed this video, it would also help with my channel a lot if you shared it with someone who would enjoy this video or even just on your social media. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you guys next time.